darkness. Praise God. And if you would just remain standing for a moment, I'm going to read uh, John chapter 15, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. And the scripture says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth for, or bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Father, we come to you again tonight, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the reading of your word. And I just pray again tonight, Lord, that you would help us to minister something that might be an encouragement and a strength, Lord Jesus, to your children. I ask you, God, again to let your spirit, your presence, flood this sanctuary as the pastor's already prayed. And I've prayed here tonight the same, God, that your wonderful spirit, God, would envelop us and help us to receive the word tonight in Jesus' name. We give you praise and we give you thanks for it. All the people said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I was uh, studying some to prepare for this uh, message tonight. And I began to contemplate as I was reading here in John how, you know, good God is to us. How good God has been and continues to be every day. But this uh, scripture that I, I read uh, lets me to know that the Lord is depending on us. The Lord is depending on us. Praise God. He, uh, he has given us something powerful, something special. And whenever, you know, we received it, he said, you shall receive power. And uh, so we do have a power that is resident in each of us if we will access that power. Amen. It's like, uh, you know, a light switch and you've got a, you've got a light and you're sitting there trying to read and it's a little, a little dark or dusky and uh, you say, uh, well, uh, it's kind of hard to read. There's a power there. All you got to do is flip the switch. And there's a power that is in us that sometimes we're a little quiet, we're a little reserved. And, and so uh, I, I've read this scripture several times, many times. I've read this scripture as you have. And uh, the scripture is very clear. He said, I am the true vine. Now, we know that as we look into the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, there are numerous times that the Lord talked about Israel as being a vine, being a vine. And uh, so I, I have a scripture or two that I want to read. I hope you will bear with me tonight. Some of these are a little lengthy, but uh, we're not going anywhere until I get through. So, and everybody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Psalm chapter 80 and verse number 8, it begins to read like this. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, and thou hast cast out the brethren and planted it. Or ca I'm sorry, cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparest room before it, and didst cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs unto the sea, and her branches into the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges? 
so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her. The boar out of the wood doth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doth devour it. Return, we beseech thee, O God. Now, whenever we read this, here we see that the Lord is saying, I did all these things for you. I brought you out of Egypt. I gave you a land that was prepared, a land that I told you was going to be a good land, a land that is, you know, prosperous. And, and uh, so I brought you out, and you, you know, you took deep root, and uh, you sent out, uh, you know, the hills were covered with the shadow. All the good things began to happen. But then you, you, lost, you lost direction. And, and uh, you, you, you allowed it to become a broken hedge and, and different things. I'll get to that in a moment. But the scripture said, And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. The people begin to ask God, Lord, come back to this vine. Israel, I want you to uh, know that they begin to realize that they had made some mistakes. And uh, Israel began to cry out to God. Isaiah chapter 5, and uh, this is verse number 1, said, Now will I sing unto my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Verse number 7, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Again, the Lord referenced Israel as being a very special people, a very people that he called his own. You are going to be my people, and I am going to be your God. And he gave them some commandments, as we well know, by the direction of Moses. He said, I want you to remember that I am God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and him only shalt thou serve. And they, they, they had the word. They had the, they had the word. And then I want to go to Jeremiah. Or pardon me, let's... Uh, Jeremiah, yes. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into a de degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? They just, they just turned completely around. They just completely walked away. And then in Hosea, Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 1, Israel is an empty vine. Now think about this, folks. God brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and he gave them, brought them through the wilderness, as you all know, and uh, could, have, could have had a very short journey going to the promised land. But because of unbelief, he had to, uh, you know, test them and prove them for 40 years, and they wondered. But then finally, Joshua took them across the uh, Jordan into the promised land, and it was divided, and all of these things that God had promised them. I want to tell you, God never slacks on His promise. His promises are always true. His promises are always right. And so He had given, you know, Israel all of these things. It says, Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto Himself. According to the multitude of His fruit, He hath increased the altars. You see... 
they begin to think that all of this stuff belonged to them. And they, they begin to uh, build their own altars that were not to God, but to their, own, to their own self and to their own flesh. According to the goodness of His land, they have made godly images. And they begin to worship all the things that were around them, that the other people, that they were supposed to be a, a light. They were supposed to be an image. They were supposed to be a reflection of God to all of these tribes that were there. And they were to be what God wanted them to be. But somehow or another, they never took hold of what God intended for Israel to be. You see, he put it, he put it on the stone on a tablet. And he said, you're going to be my people and I'm going to be your God. But they, they were still in the flesh. And because that they were in the flesh, the things of the world began to have an attraction to them. Our pastor even said it. He said, we are prone to sin. We are, you know, of our earthly nature. But God's been good to us. God has been good to us. God has done marvelous things. God did that for Israel. He said, you're going to be a peculiar treasure. You're going to be a peculiar people unto me. You're going to be different. You're going to be something that's going to be, a, you know, an astonishment to the world and to those that look at you. He said, you're, I'm going to be there and, and I'm going to do wonders in your midst and I'm going to do great things. And he did. And he did. And yet, because that, you know, it was in the it was in their word, but it wasn't in their heart. It was in their word, but it wasn't in their heart. Israel was to be a witness to the world, and the Lord, you know, made it all possible. Can you say amen? He gave them everything they needed. There were miracles and there were all kinds of benefits, and and he blessed them with all the all the blessings of life. And yet they forgot where the blessings came from. Amen. They forgot. And their horses were not in the house of God, but they were at uh, altars that they built themselves. And they were in places where the Im images were set up that God despised and all these things. And you know what? The Lord left them. He turned, he turned them aside. And he began to send some prophets with a message that we're going to we're going to change, you know, some things. I'm not going to write it on stone, but I'm going to write it on the fleshly tables of their heart. Praise God. I'm going to put it down on the inside, you know, where that it's going to be uh, something each. Uh, I, I want to say, you know, it might have been to the nation of Israel. But Jesus came, thank God, and whenever he came and he made the sacrifice and he went to Calvary and he came uh, back from the grave and he ascended into the heavens and he came back and filled us with his spirit and, you know, gave us the written word. But he not only gave us the written word, but he gave us his spirit, thank God, to dwell on the inside so that we're going to be a people that are going to be peculiar in this hour and in this day in which we live. It's going to be a time whenever, you know, the Lord is looking for people that are going to be a light. And so he began to bring this forth, you know, in John here that we read. And as I was looking at this and I began to think on it a little bit, I thought how that uh, the Lord, you know, was talking to uh, the church. He's talking to the the people there that day, and uh, he was visiting with his apostles and his disciples, and he said, I want you to hear me. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. There's a lot of, uh, you know, substitutes in the world today. There's a lot of people, a lot of things that are vying for people's attention. To get them to be drawn to this one or to draw to that one. False religions, whatever it might be. But I want you to know that there's only one true vine. There's only one true church. Thank God there's only one true name. There's only one true plan. Praise God. And that has to be through the name of the Lord Jesus. We all understand. I don't have anybody here tonight that don't understand that. I know that every one of you, 
have repented, been baptized, as I look around, been filled with the Holy Ghost, might be, have one little one here. But I'm saying this. We, we know what we're saying. So what are you talking about, Brother Long? What are you, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he prunes it. It said purges, but it, it, he prunes it. In other words, he trims it. He takes. I want you to know that God loves you. God loves those that will work and labor in the vineyard. He will, he will work. And I, I, I tell you, whenever I read this, and I've read it, you, I, I read it again today. I am the vine and you are the branches. And then he said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And it is withered and man gathered and cast them into the fire and they are burned. And if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and you shall, it shall be done unto you. So we, we have the option. We have the option. I've, I've been serving the Lord now for, you know, 60 years. And uh, whenever I, I think of that, uh, I, I thought of what David said. David, you know, was going down to, going to bring up the ark and they were going to bring it to a certain place and this threshing floor of Aruna. And David said, he came, they were going to bring the ark to that place. And, and, uh, and Aruna said, take it, take it, take the, take the, take the, take the, uh, the, the threshing floor, take the field, take the oxen and, uh, you know, for sacrifices, cut up the instruments, use that for the wood. He said, just take it, you know, and David said this, he said, no, I will surely buy it from you at the price. And he said, not only that, he said, but I would not offer unto God anything that doth cost me nothing. Praise God. I, you know, I know I hear folks say, all you have to do is believe. And all you have to do is believe. And, and once you're saved, once you're saved, and you believe and you're saved, nothing can add to that or take away from it. You are saved. You are saved. And I, I think about that, and I think, well, you know, it looks a little strange to me whenever I look into the Word because when I look into the Word, you know, I find in Ephesians this. It says this. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And they use that Scripture to say you, can't, you don't have to do any works. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You're, if you're going to be saved, you're going to be saved. And that, that's, you can't be, if you're ever saved, you're going, I had my sister to tell me that. If you're ever saved, you can never be lost. Well, I thought then you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I also read a scripture that said that the devil also believes and he trembles. He's got fear of God. And I know he knows that his time is short. But what I'm saying is, is that a lot of times we, uh, we become a little lax. We become a little lax. And uh, I've, I've thought whenever I, I read this, you know, James, he said it like this. He said, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and he hath not works? Can faith save him? Verse 17 and verse 20, you know, also said, but wilt thou know, O man, that's faith without works is dead. Faith without work. I understand tonight that people want to be saved. I understand tonight that people want to go to heaven because nobody wants to go to hell. We know that. But there are the, the, the idea, you know, that all you have to do is just believe and you are going to be eternally saved. And whenever you look at the word of the Lord, and I read what Jesus is saying here. He said, I, you're going to have to do some work. You, I want you to know that whenever he said, that, he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. We, we get our strength and we get our, our hope and we get our blessings from God. We get our blessing. We get our strength. We get our, 
uh, uh, you know, security. We, the reward that is going to be given at the, is going to be because of what we have accomplished. Now, I don't know about you. As I told you, I've, I've lived for the Lord now for 60 years and better. And I've tried, you know, to do some preaching and I've tried, but I still, Brother uh, Tub, I still pray and say, God, I don't want to, I don't want to stand before you empty. I don't want to stand before you empty. I want some sheaves. And I'm not, I'm not satisfied yet that I've done all that I need to do. And I, I want to say to you tonight that we need to get into this word. We need to look into this word that we're reading right here. It is, it is so necessary and so essential, thank God, that we do something for the kingdom of God. We've got to do something for the kingdom of God. We've got to be laborers in the vineyard. And he said, if you're going to be in the vineyard, you're going to be laborers. He said, if a man abide not in me, he shall be cast forth as a branch. And it is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. If we're going to be disciples, true disciples, then we're going to have to have some fruit along the way. Now, I... I believe this tonight, that there are different ways to bear fruit. People are called different to do different things. But I believe the primary way to bear fruit is to be a light, to be a witness. And some people, it's easy. I think about Brother Bobby. You know, he can see anybody in Walmart, and if they smile at him, he's going to talk to them. And sometimes if they don't smile at him, he'll still talk to them. But you know what? Brother Bobby can talk to them, and you know what? He'll talk to them for a little bit, and then he'll begin to tell them, you know what God did for me? You know what God did for me? Brother Willie, you're another one. Praise God. God's done some great things for you, and you got a testimony. God, something that you can say, hey. But you know what? God did something for all of us. Every one of us. God has done something for all of us. He called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And He gave us a hope, praise God. And He gave us a promise. And He said, this is what going, I'm going to give you. And in return, you shall be witnesses unto me in Judea, in Samaria, you know, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Praise God. I want you to be a light. I want you to be... I don't, want you to, I don't want you to go after the things of the world. I don't want you to become enamored with all the different things. Hey, Satan's got a whole slew of things out there that uh, attract people and draw them and get them so bound up with things that they don't have time to do anything for God. Their minds are far away, but not us. Not us, you know. We need to, we need to bring our, our desires and our things into the house of God and into the kingdom of God. And we need to be thinking more about someone that we can reach, somebody that we can do something to help them. We, we just need to say, God, I want to be a soul winner. I want to be a soul. I want to be one that help me, Lord Jesus, to have a, a testimony. Give me the courage to be a witness. I said a while ago, you know, we need to ask God to give us a boldness. A boldness because many times we are a little meek. Now, I know that the Bible said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, you know. But I, I, I don't believe that the God, 
It's talking about being meek whenever it comes to being a witness for him. Whenever people speak evil of you, whenever speak, uh, you know, do all manner of evil against you, then to have that meek spirit is, is fine. That's a good thing. But to say, well, I'm just, it's just not in me, you know, to talk to people. Well, ask God to help you. Ask God to help you to be able to talk to people. Brother Randy, dealing with a little lady at the service station out there in Lamar. She already came once. Her hours kind of inhibit, inhibit, but he's still, he's still going back and talking to her. Still reaching. Praise God. And you know what? Sometimes if you just be kind to people and just stay with them for a while, you'll be surprised at what it'll do. Everybody's not the same. Some people, you know, have a good testimony, strong, and they're able to really, otherwise some we have to kind of work our way into it. You understand what I'm saying? Just don't be negative in doing nothing for the kingdom. I believe this. I believe that some of the best workers that we have are Sunday school teachers and people that are working in the phone booth. And I mean the <laughs> phone booth. <laughs> In the, in the work power back there, you know, uh, Sister Elaine on the piano, you know, musicians, uh, they're, they're, they're using the talent that God gives them so that they can be a, a witness for the Lord and, and they can do something for the kingdom of God. And every one of us have to look around and find our place. What am I going to do for the kingdom? But I do believe that the Lord has something for every one of us to do. Sister, I'm looking at Sister Smith over there, bless her heart. I tell you what, she's been serving God longer than I had. And whenever what she's done, what I've done, I can't hold a candle to her. But I won't tell you what, she gave her life to children, working with children, praying them through to the Holy Ghost, teaching them the word of the Lord, singing for the Lord, playing an instrument. She's, she gave her life for that. And I won't tell you what, there's been a record that's been kept. I'm glad God keeps a record. Thank God. I'm glad God keeps a record. Praise God. And he's not going to forget your record. He said, I'm not going to forget the things that you've done. Hallelujah. People come up to me and say, you remember what we did years ago? And you, I said, I don't remember that. I'll remember that. I can't remember what I did yesterday hardly anymore. I have to help my wife. She has to help me. <laughs> Praise God. But God is good. Hey, folks, I, I'm saying whenever we look into the word of the Lord here, he said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment, and I abide in his love. We want, we want to abide, you know, in the Spirit. Thank God. that, And, and I like, we need, to, we need to have it at home. We need to have it at home. We need to have it whenever we are in the grocery store or whenever we're any place else, you know, where we're contacting people. Need to have a smile on our face. Have a light. Thank God that others would look at and say, wonder what they're smiling about. Huh? Wonder what they're happy about. There's enough other stuff in the world that friend, whenever they see somebody that's got a smile on their face, they think, I wonder what's going on in their life. And they might just stop you and say, what are you smiling about? And you can say, I'll tell you what, friend, if God had done for you what he's done for me, you'd be smiling too. Now let me tell you about it. Praise God. Hey, God can open a door. God can make a way. And you need to pray and say, God, open some doors for me. Lord Jesus, open some doors for me because I do want to be a light. I do want to be a witness. I do want to touch some lives. Praise God. I want to be something for the kingdom of God. The Lord has been so good to all of us. He's been so good to all of us. Now, I want to tell you, living for God. How many of you are gardeners? Could I see your hand? You like to make gardens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, now, Brother Tay, he don't make gardens. He's like me. He don't know how to, he don't know how to make garden. <laughs> Young lady right there. Okay, say. But you know what? Uh, when you make when you make a garden, you have to fight for it. 
When you make a garden, if you're going to get any produce from it, you're going to have to fight for it. Because those weeds will take that thing over. And I want to tell you what, there's a, there's a, a, a parable that goes along with that too that says the seed is sown and we receive the seed, you know, and we receive it for a while, but after a while those weeds kind of come up. Try, hey, and you know what? I was thinking about kind of like, I don't know a whole lot about a lot of things, but I do know a little bit about some things. Uh, I know one that if you have a tomato plant and uh, you're getting some blooms on it and you're getting maybe some, they'll be what they call suckers. And they'll come out on that plant and they will try to take all the strength away from that uh, tomato or whatever's on that vine. And so you've got to go in and you've got to cut those things off so that that tomato gets all of the uh, juice that it's supposed to. Amen? Amen? All right. And I also know this. You can have a nice rochineer out there looking really good, but there's a corn borer worm. And if you're not careful, that aggravating thing will eat your rochineer up before you get there. You have to watch it. And I'm telling you, I'm saying this. There are all kinds of things in the world, spirits, that are trying to get a hold of us as we are serving God and living for the Lord and, and spirits. And it may be spirit. I have to, there's a spirit that gets after me and I have to really fight that thing. It's called lethargy. Lethargy, laziness. And uh, it's just one of those things that we have to fight against. But if we would remember how we feel on Sunday night, Praise God, or Sunday morning. Don't have Sunday night service anymore. <laughs> Sunday morning, never the presence of the Lord is moving and the Spirit of God's moving. We got our hand up and we're praising the Lord and worshiping. And I had a I had a thing on the internet this week from and uh, one of my granddaughters talked about how down she was down that day and just felt like she wanted, didn't want to be around anybody, didn't want to talk to anybody. And I put a little note on there. I said, depression is the enemy. Depression is an enemy. I said, all you need to do is begin to start praising the name of Jesus, worshiping the Lord. And I said, you'll see the devil start running pretty quick. But you have to exercise these things. And you have to say, Lord, I want to be one that is going to be a laborer in the vineyard. I want to have some fruit whenever I stand before you in judgment. Praise God. I want to have some fruit. Thank God that's going to, you know, be on my record. And I, I don't know what it's going to look like. I, I, I have no idea. I just say this, that I know he said, every man is going to be rewarded, and that we, includes women too, are going to be rewarded according as their works shall be. You're going to be rewarded according as your works are. Praise God. And so sometimes, like I say, I, I worry about that a little bit myself. And I say, Lord... I don't want to stand before you empty-handed. And I pray that, you know, maybe missionary offerings that we've given and things that we've tried to support down through the years, maybe there's a few souls that I've never seen that might be credited to my account. But I can tell you this. We need to all ask the Lord, God, don't let me get complacent. Don't let me get complacent. Don't let me get, you know, negligent. Don't let me forget where my blessing comes from. Don't let me forget, God, what you've done for me. Israel forgot, and they lost out. Jesus told them, he said, I'm, I'm going to go to the Gentiles. I'm going to go to the Gentiles. And he did. Thank God. They can still come if they want to come to the Jesus name message, the Jews can come this way. But right now, the Gentiles, you know, and I'm saying to you tonight, friend, we've got the good things. God's blessed us. Hallelujah. And I know this Wednesday night message I brought to you has been kind of scattered and everything else. But I just want you to know this. We need to say, God, let me be mindful every day. Let me remember that I need to be about your business doing something for the kingdom. Read the Word. Hide the Word in your heart. Praise God. Put the Word down in your spirit. Pray and seek God and say, Lord, 
I want to be a, a fountain where there's some good stuff coming out. I want the fountain, you know, to be flowing. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, things that's good, not contaminated stuff, but stuff that's good. And that comes whenever we search and seek and pray and fast and talk to God and say, Lord, I want my life to be a witness. And I want my, my name, you know, to be written down in the Lamb's book of life. And I want to hear you say, I told somebody again, I think it was this day, maybe I'm talking to, I said, the only thing that's really going to matter, and how many times have I told you this church, the only thing that's really going to matter whenever we stand before him is to hear him say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Sister Elaine, praise God. God bless you tonight. It's been my privilege to say these few words, but I do pray that we are going to say, God, we're believing you for revival. We're believing you for an end gathering, and I'm going to be part of it. Praise God, I'm going to be part of it. I'm going to work, and I'm going to labor, and I'm going to talk to somebody. And we're going to bring somebody to the house of God. Can you say amen? God bless you so much.